The Lord our God is a jealous God, a righteous God, and the creator of life. Now, as we study the Holy Word from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation, we are in the book of Numbers. In Numbers 25, verse 3, the Bible states, And Israel joined himself unto Bel Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. In this lesson, we will learn how the children of Israel committed ungodly sensuism and how it displeased God Almighty. Come with us as we go through Numbers chapter 25. I'll see you there. Giving thanks unto the Lord, he is not found in the whirlwind, he is not found in the fire, he is found in the still, small voice, 
We want to thank you again for coming in this endeavor as we are studying God's Holy Bible from the beginning to the end, Genesis to Revelation. Again, as we were speaking on Sunday, we had ended the time in which we were talking about Balak and Balaam. Balak was the king of Moab and he had began to come against Israel because he saw that the Lord was with Israel and he feared for his nation. There was something inside of him that he knew that his time was coming to an end. This is the way of the life of the kings and that the kings know that they're living their lives in a way that is not pleasing unto the Lord. And when the enemy comes upon the land, they begin to tremble. They begin to fear because they know within them that they have not done right. And this is the way of our hearts. The Bible says that in that day, their hearts will ultimately fail. They would quiver. They would tremble. The Bible says the book of uh, uh, Samuel, Eli, he feared when he heard the news that the Lord had judged Israel. I'd move forward on you. And Israel was one that had gone against the way of the Lord. And this is something that was happening that the Lord was dealing with. So now the Lord defended Israel. Balak was a king of Moab. Moab is the children of Lot. If you remember in the stories before, Abraham and Lot strove together. Well, now here it is, they had children. Over time, 430 years, Moab is a nation. Israel is a nation. Moab being the children of Lot, what are they doing? They're striving with the children of Israel. And as the king Balak, he says, I'm not going to allow them to cross through and I want you to curse them. So here we have strife again. And this is out of the lineage of those that were born among Abraham, which was Abraham's nephew. So now they're in the children in the land of Canaan, which were the children of Ham. Let me see that map. And again, Balak wanted Balaam to curse them as they were moving up a part of away from the Red Sea. And this is the area where they were for 40 years. The Lord had judged them because they had multiplied and then in their complaints, they came against him. And the Lord realized he wasn't getting anywhere with these people. So he cursed them. But we see that when Moses went to the mountain of the Lord, that the people of Israel immediately took on the ways of Egypt. Egypt had a way, a way of enjoyment as we do in our modern times. Nothing is new with the carnal man. We engage in things that is defeating of the natural man. It ruins the structure, the stability that God has placed in mankind. And this is one of the causes that the Lord got angry with the children of Israel and he left them at Horeb for an entire year. And they chide with him. They murmured against him. They complained against him him, the Lord, and Moses. But there was a way in the earth that the Lord was looking upon mankind. There is a way that the Lord does not like. It is an custom of mankind. It is a lewdness that becomes a part of our members, our minds. And in our modern times, we make laws to accommodate this lewdness, this way of life that is destructive. Even in that day, the children that were burned before Moloch, now think of the 40 years are on its way of expiration. How many hundreds of thousands of children did the God of Moloch intrigue individuals to bring children? Whose children were these? Where did they get these children? Where did they find them? Was there a father and a mother looking for these children? And again, the Lord is looking upon Molech. He's looking upon the people of Canaan who serve him. A fallen God who had desire to burn. His interest as a fallen entity was the sound of torture from children as some of you are. And this spirit, this devil, was intrigued by the sound, intrigued by the blood. 
intrigued by the torture. And so he had camaraderie individuals in the land of Canaan who bowed to his God, his image. And they took upon themselves incense. And I know some of you say, I'm tired of hearing about this. Well, what do you think the Lord is saying? He was tired of looking at it then and he annihilated it. And now he's looking at it again. And the nations that call upon the name of the Lord, where you have a more perfect covenant. These people did not have the spirit of God in them. Some of you evil people. You had the spirit of God guiding you in your blood vessel. If you had the name of Christ simply on your tongue, then the power of his righteousness gets into your members and your decisions that you make are better. You can't have nations of righteousness without the way of Christ. Man, you don't have what it is inside of you to do that which is good. So the people of Israel were cursed behind their backs. Here it is, Balaam is being used by a king to speak against God's chosen. And here the Lord is defending them. Here the Lord is covering them. Here the Lord is ready to strike down a prophet for altering his plan. And the children of Israel being clueless of how loyal the Lord is. And he was loyal to them because of Abraham. Everything God did for Israel, Abraham was in the back of his mind and the servitude of Moses. It had nothing to do with you, Israel. And the Bible will tell you it had nothing to do with your righteousness because you had no righteousness. It had to do with the Lord and his promise and his goodness and his mercy, his long suffering, his everlasting mercies and gracious kindness to our evil. It had nothing to do with Israel. So now we look at Balak and Balaam. Balaam realized, I'm not going to get anywhere. The Bible shows in chapter 24, I know you really didn't get a chance to look upon it because he began to bless Jacob. He began to bless them. And so now he figured it out. So now we're going to move on to chapter 25. We're going to see how quickly the people of Israel went away from the Lord. Numbers chapter 25. And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto sacrificing of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. Now look at what's going on. You are there to defeat Canaan. Let me have that map, sweetheart. You are there by a commission of God. Does that sound familiar? Commission. What is the great commission? Same as what we have for the gospel. Right now, they're carrying the gospel of the law of Moses. Gospel is the news of God. So they're carrying the gospel of Moses into the land. What was that gospel? That the year of the Lord has now come upon Canaan. You're no longer going to do these evils. You're no longer going to sacrifice these children. You're no longer going to eat up the inhabitants of the earth. You're no longer going to be taking people hostage and placing them under chains and bondages. And Canaan had heard what the Lord had done to Egypt. But these were the fallen. They knew it was of God that did this. They knew that the Lord's hand was involved. But even Canaan looked upon the people of Israel. And they knew. Satan knew. One way he can get you is by the ways of your carnal flesh. So let's return to chapter 25. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. 
And look at this verse two. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. Now first it says they committed whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And now Moab, as you saw, Balak had Peor Balaam. It was a God that they worshiped. Now the whoredom that they were committing is what they would do is they would literally lay with one another in front of this God. They would rise up, eat and drink, they were taking incense and they did it in front of a image. This is the nature of Canaan. Moab are the children of Lot. Lot was Abraham's nephew. Over time, they are a nation with kings. And what are they doing? They're doing what Canaan is doing. They're bowing down before God's images. They're laying naked, having sensual encounters, men and women. This is the conduct of the Canaanite people. This was the conduct of Egypt. This is the conduct of America. This is the conduct of the nations. Where did you get this from? It goes back to the Bible days. Let me teach you something. You men who say, he can't teach me anything. I'm above him. Let me teach you something. You still are in the Bible days until every word is proclaimed and declared in the book of Revelation. It ain't done yet. So you are in the Bible days right now. And until the new Jerusalem comes down from on high, until the Lord takes your eye out of the 10% spectrum of color and your eyes become vast, he says every eye shall see him and every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is king. So let me tell you what's gonna happen. When your eyes are opened vastly as he opened the dumb donkey, you're going to see that new Jerusalem come down. Even your microscopes can't see this. And it's going to land in the new Jerusalem. And you're going to see him as he is. But right now you can't see. You are perplexed in your evil. And you have taken upon the ways of Canaan and in your virtual reality, the daughters of Canaan are naked before the people with one click of a mouse, one type of a key on your virtual. You can see virtual displays of the acts of Canaan. And this is the reason why the church cannot go forth. You have been engaged with this virtually where you extract even your own blood looking upon this. Put on your seatbelt. Just as Israel could not get the land of Canaan, and God brought judgment upon Israel because they were engaged with Canaanite women. You are virtually engaged. And this is why you cannot move forward in your gospel. This is why the prosperity gospel is an ultimate failure because your people are unclean. The women are not married. What do you think they're doing in their homes? How many times are you going to wash yourself in the blood and walk back into the house of God to go back to do it again, to walk back into the house of God, to walk back and do it again? How many times are we going to do this? And you think the Holy Ghost power is going to come upon the church. And here's the issue. 
we are looking upon the Canaanite woman. And it's in the blood. You see, it'd be better for you if you are single to be fasting and praying. Because if you are not with a husband or wife, you're becoming impure. You can't even rightfully seek the Lord because you feel the impurity. That's because you're extracting from your body blood. You are aroused by the Canaanite woman and the Canaanite man, the vile man. I remember a time when I was in a Christian school and I was designing a seal for the church and I simply looked up the word bull and I could not believe what was displayed. Some of us were set aside, but we didn't even know it was there. I'm being completely honest with you. I had no idea that was in a virtual reality. The Lord had positioned me next to men of God and I dare not walk in fornication and ungodliness, any ungodliness of fornication, virtual or not. Dare not walk in these things, walking close to a man of God and a woman of God. And I was at the age of 30 when I first saw such wickedness in your virtual reality, simply looking up a word that is a natural word. And this is reason why the church cannot move forward. I get it. We're moving along. We're just building. We're just accommodating life. But the women are not married. Many of them are not married. 80% of the churches are women. Some of you, 90%. Their husbands are not there or they're not married at all. Their bodies cry out for the natural consumption of love and relief, intimacy. It is the most beautiful thing God made is intimacy. And it is the greatest distraction that the devil has used against God's people, against the earth, against all nations. All nations partook in the lewdness and the conduct of the flesh on tamed flesh. Many of you are worse than animals. Animals have more restraint than people. And this is what they begin to do. God just defended Israel. And now they're in the land of Shittim near Moab. And they begin to gaze at what they're doing. That's why the Bible tells you not to allow that eye to be black. What does that mean? Whatever you look upon, if you are intrigued, if you are aroused, young ladies, you're going to desire it. And when the devil in the man, listen, the enemy is attracted to God's creation. Genesis chapter six. The sons of God came down to the daughters of men. He separated the two beings. The sons of God came down to the daughters of men. Many of you leaders have been teaching this improperly. You're saying that these were men. They were not men. These were entities. They were attracted to the women. They were attracted to the women. This is why Paul told them, cover your hair. You've entertained angels. The angels can be attracted to you. So the lewdness and the untamed nature of Canaan was all over the world. Egypt, all over the world. Greece, all over the world. Babylon. We always talk about Babylon. We are Babylon now. But you're worse than Babylon. Babylon is a part of your past. You're becoming Canaan. It would have been better for you if you were as Babylon. 
but you have become as Canaan. And when you become as Canaan, there is only one judgment for Canaan. When you become so engaged with darkness, you are even tempting your children. Babylon is not known for tempting children. God sustained Babylon after he judged Babylon. But Canaan was annihilated. You become so much like the devil that you become his children. And there's no hope for you. Some of your spirits are the spirits of fallen. You are not God's children. You are not his children at all. Some of you are born with the spirit of darkness. Some of the things that your parents did, you did not get a spirit of God. And this is why you can only do evil. And some of you are next to Canaan. And you picked up the ways of Canaan. And some of you wear the cloth. Some of you wear the cloth. And you have been engaged looking at Canaan. Better is he who looks and touches not than he who looks and goes after. But I say again, look not at the fornications and the abominations and the adulteries of Canaan. Because if you look upon it, when it is displayed in front of you, you're going to go after it. Single women. You're in the house of God and you got all these problems with men. You hate men, but you sure are attracted to the vile men of Canaan. But you hate men. You hate to serve a living being. You hate a living being to tell you something to do. The Bible says that Christ is the head of the church. And the head of all households is that man. And you hate that. So you would rather be intrigued and aroused by a vile Canaanite man in virtual reality. You would rather be single and not be under any man and appease and please yourself and your blood be tainted with the fornication. See, you're saying, I'm not involved. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Once the blood is involved, where it triggers your body, you just got involved in an evil deed. So if you're single and you're engaging with the vile men or the vile women, whatever you like, you are bringing to yourself an impurity in that blood. And we think that we're going to get some Holy Ghost power in the church. You think that it's your finest hour. Blessings, I'm highly favored of God. Highly a favor. And you won't submit to your husband. Next, the men. I'm going to leave you out. You don't find your wife attractive anymore. The Canaanite woman in virtual reality is your way of life. And there's nothing wrong with you two. You, you both are healthy. But you are looking for more. So you look upon the Canaanite woman acting out her way of life and you look for them to be gone so that you can engage. And then if your wife comes to try and please you, you're not pleased. It's because you have the virtual reality of whoredom in your blood and by DNA, it is programmed in your mind. Your mind programs what you look at and however your body responds, the body makes a record. So you're making a record. 
you got bad blood with your wife and your husband, your body makes a record. Then when they come in the door, when you see them, your body reacts. When they're with you in conversation, your body reacts. Because if you keep responding negatively, if you keep pushing back, if you keep having an arm against them, then it's going to be in your blood. That's why you must be unto each other as a sacrifice. See, when you give yourself to someone, you find it easy to serve that individual. When you give yourself unto someone, you are engaged in their thoughts, their mind, their heart, their desires. And you spend your time learning of that being. What is a few pounds, men, on your wife that you find so misleading of your attraction? There is an attraction in an individual that has nothing to do with the physical Coca-Cola bottle. I wonder if Coca-Cola gonna send me a check for this. There's more to life than the frame that you find to be the intriguing part. That is just a caption of the love. But there is a deeper love within that young lady that if you tap into it, if you look into the beady ship of that eye, you learn the dilation of her eye, the sound of her voice, how her hair twitches on the side when you say certain things, the, the snickering of her cheek and certain lines that engage her face, the way she blushes, her body language and when you speak, the way she tilts her head and plays with her hair, in your company. These are the attributes of the soul of the woman. If you engage in her with your soul, these aspects of life are much more intriguing than the shape of the woman. It's more intriguing than the painting of the Egyptian eye. This is where you get the painting of your faces. Egypt, I get it. It's beautiful, sometimes. But there's more to your wives than the shape, than the way she dances. And there's something that is going on in the church where after so many years, you have no desire for your wife. None. Now that can be twofold. It could be she as well. She's not uh, serving you in a certain way. She's not coming to you in that capacity. She doesn't yield herself to you. And I understand there's so many variables, but I'm talking to the man who had a good life, had a good wife. And you went after the Canaanite woman virtually. Then after the virtual is not longer pleasing you. You go out for the reality of it. And this is what Israel did. That's why the Lord told them, do not engage with them. He wanted them removed because Canaan had caused all the lands to be like them. Who was causing the entire world to look upon the lewdness? Started in the 60s. You started broadcasting. It was secret before, but you made the sin greater. You did that. And then you begin to multiply the essence of the act. And from 60, in the 50s, it was hidden. 60s, it got worse. I told you 70 years. 70 years you have caused this nation to look as Canaan. I can't even go forward from number one and number two because there is something in the land that is hindering. You will not go and take the land. You will not go and fulfill the word of the Holy Ghost 
until we are baptized in that Holy Spirit, until we are purged and mortified of these things. We will not go into that land. You have been crying for silver and gold for generations. And all it did would get is got you is single homes, men and women. You're not with one another. You are engaged and married to the Canaanite virtual woman. And some of you are married to the Canaanite and vile man. You have many of them and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Anytime you are engaged virtually, the Bible says a man that lays with a harlot, that is your wife. So if she lays with somebody else, then you've laid with her. And this is how that plague kept building up and growing because of the uncleanliness. We're not going to move any further. And now because you've been so much with the Canaanite woman, she's no longer intriguing to the powerful. You now desire other flesh. Just as the Canaanite people were laying with beasts. Now that's what you do. You have to be with a beast. And you made it a federal law that your soldiers could go and do this in lands. You can't charge a soldier for doing that. Because he's out there so long, he just has to relieve himself. So he does it with a goat or an animal. And there was a law to take that away, that it was no longer you know, a penalty, a crime that he could defile himself with a goat and fruit could come forth from that animal. This is the way of your nation. You made that law, you took it away. Now there's other laws that are hidden. See, 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 see. The preacher man, you spend so much time trying to sound like you can preach. And the Lord said unto them, come on out, Israel. Come on out, I'm going to bring you out. You have spent so much time. Sound great. You get the women all involved. You raise your offerings. But you have no idea of the detail, the small text of laws that are going in this land. And you have sent this all over the world. Who's looking upon the acts of the lewdness of people now? Who, who, who started these virtual things? Who, who, who's responsible? You're not Babylon anymore. You've graduated. You know, there's graduation in evil. You can graduate from a certain level of evil to another level of evil. And you have graduated past the days of Canaan. You are in a whole new category of your own. You put it in your cartoons. Subliminal messages to children. You've been doing this since the 60s. And you church people are just too quiet. You're too quiet. God's blessings are mine. I'm going to have a great life. God's victory is mine. I hear some out there say, everything he talks about is gloom, dark. Am I, am I, am I the only one on planet Earth? Am, am I the only one? Do, do, do you see what I see? Do you all see what I see? Do you see what is going on in your nation? Some of you refuse to take the stance for the cause of the Lord. What was the cause of the Lord in that day? Canaanites are destroying life. The natural way of life that God made is being destroyed. Moab is looking at what they're doing. All the nations surrounding Canaan is doing what they do. 
You're seeing it right here. They went out and committed whoredom. This was not behind closed doors. They did this in the open. They did this right there. And the Lord knew they were doing it. And this is the fault of Israel. This is why Israel kept falling. Some of you, you have secrets. You need to learn to keep a marriage. The Bible says better to marry than to burn. You're going to get rid of your husband or get rid of your wife and you're going to go live like that. You're going to have all these virtual wives that you're engaging with. Once that blood is extracted from you and that arousal, you have participated in fornication and adultery. You, you can't deny it. The blood came from you. Women or men, I don't care who you are. That's why don't look at it. Or well, if you're married, stop complaining because he doesn't wash dishes. Stop complaining because of silly, frivolous things. You complain because you want to have power with him. You complain of other things. And some of you, you don't, you don't sensualize your husband. You don't lay with him. You don't give him the compassion that he needs. Men are built to be attracted to a woman. That's why when a man becomes successful and he goes out in the world, I guarantee you that Canaanite woman is going to come right up to that job site. Some of you lose your husbands because you won't, you will not give him the compassion he needs. The Bible tells the husband to be ravished with her breast. Do you know what ravished is? The Bible tells him be ravished with her. She is the loving hind. Whoa, I didn't know that was in the Bible. Yeah, it is. He made it. The Lord made her for him. He told him, be ravished with her breasts. Don't read the book of Solomon's children. This is PG concerning what your, your kids look at. So don't act like I'm saying anything. He said, be ravished with her. Be ravished. He talked about the loving hind. There's a reason why it was called the loving hind. It was a comfort to a man. This is the way of the life of men so that you populate. But you've made a stigma for the men. Are there something wrong with men for being attracted to women? This is such stupidity. Oh my, I'm trying to get here. Then the church. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get here. The people in the church, women in the church, you dress like Canaanite women. One of the most detestable things you can see in the house of God is the contour of a woman and her shape in the house of God, worshiping God. And you see that woman. Will you tell the man, I'll turn your eye? No, you cover up. You look like a Canaanite woman. I could say other things, but I'm going to be gentle. And you in the house of God, shaking yourself. Things going all over the place. And you got men who come out of the world looking at you. And then your churches look like clubs anyway. So he just literally, he went from Friday night to Sunday morning and he's got a little bit of a difference. The difference is the beat, the sound, the, 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 the music is slightly different, but the appearance looks a little bit like what he saw last night. Looking at the Canaanite woman, you have formed your churches to look like the sacrifices unto their gods. That's what they did. They did their sacrificing in the nighttime in the dawn. When the sun's going down, they light the fire. They spin the fire. The women come out. They get lewd. They take off their clothing. They do certain flares and lights. They do certain things in the mind sight. The enigma. They beat the drum. The drum was beat in a certain way so that they would be aroused by the sound. They're beating the drum and the beat is causing hypnotism. That's why some of you can't get off the music you listen to because you're hypnotized by it. Then you glorify the Canaanite woman and you're of the house of God and you glorify her. Some of you send likes and loves to the abominable Canaanite woman in the land of America and you are part of the house of God. Oh, you get you judgmental now. No, I'm not. He says, come out and be ye separate. Moses came down and says, who's on the Lord's side? Well, you're saying, oh, you're going Old Testament. Well, the Bible moving forward, Apostle Paul said, don't even eat bread with them. Don't sit down at the table with them. Don't even touch their clothes. You're judgmental. Oh, no, I'm not. 
I am not your judge. I am your informant. I am letting you know that there is a God in heaven. And just as Israel could not attain the land, they never fully got the land because of this one key thing, sensuism in the sight of Israel. What is public in your virtual reality. And many of the churches, you're falling by this. And many of you are single. You can't even get married because you didn't seen about 10,000 of them naked. 10,000 of them. You're worse than Solomon. Don't judge Solomon. At least he took care of them. You people, you preachers judging Solomon. At least he took care of them. You'd be better off. If you're so wild and crazy, get you a few and take care of them. It's scriptural, but you're all over the place. Some of you, you're married to your, your husband to a wife, first lady, and you extract blood. You know what I'm talking about. At the virtual Canaanite woman. She ain't real. Yes, she is real. You extract blood on it. So your mind thought it was real. So once it came out of you in that magnitude, you committed sin. You laid with the Canaanite woman. And we've been doing it. And if you don't stop doing it, then God has no other choice but to bring judgment. He has to bring judgment because we will not bring in the Christ like this. We will not bring him in. If you're married, be one to one another. Give love to one another. Give sensuism to one another. Talk to one another. Engage with one another. Stop being so offended by every little thing. Women, he's a man. You should be glad he's attracted to you. You should be glad he desires you. Now, men, don't go pushing on your wives and you haven't been kind to her. You haven't, you know, look, I don't need to be in all of your business. I'm just trying to show you that as soon as they were getting ready to move forward, what is the first thing they did? Some of the times, pastors, you know, when they come into the house of the Lord and they receive the Lord, one of the first sins that falls upon a people is the fornication. The need to be with another. And they have to go and fast. Living in a life of celibacy is not easy, but you can do it. You absolutely can do it with fasting and prayer. Listen, again, I didn't even know the stuff existed till I was 30 and I couldn't believe it was there. Now, that didn't mean I went back and looked at it because I didn't. But I'm not going to lie and say I haven't seen it. But the issue is you keep your heart from these things, people. Keep your eyes off of the Canaanite people because Israel were looking at them. And this is why they fell into sin. They're looking at it. They're engaged with their eyes, which is the, the, the beginning point. And then men, you're in churches. So people come to you. They know you by name. They know where you are. And that spirit gets inside of these individuals and they come there. Or even if you're a single woman, they're going to come to you. And then that night hour, when you're alone, you're going to seek. The world tells you it's okay. The world tells you it's natural. But you know by the blood that when you are involved, the guilt that falls upon you, you know you have fallen short. That is your spirit man and the conviction of the Holy Ghost to walk pure Canaan is in the land. And we will not attain the commission. Stop deceiving ourselves. We will not get there. God will bring utter judgment upon us. Let me go on. Verse 3 of 25. Listen to this. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. Why? Because of the sensuism that he witnessed. He wanted to act out what he saw with his eyes. 
It was not just bowing down to gods. If you go throughout the lands and you visit other nations, you will see the engraving, the artifacts. You will see it in their nationalities of what they did. This is the life of mankind. And we're doing it again. And Israel, verse 3, joined himself unto Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. So the Lord grabbed all the leaders. If you are a leader and you are not telling the people to stop, you are like Aaron. Hopefully you're not like Aaron because Aaron made a God and said, go out and do it. But if you are not telling them now, this is a different time. Aaron has lost his time. And now if you are a leader and you are not telling your people and you know they're doing this, but you're simply taking their tithes and offerings, but we're unclean. The church is unclean. Now there's a plague in the land. Some of the daughters and the men of the house of God lost their life because of fornication and adultery. Mingling with other and that you have already mingled and they had it and they had it. And there you go. Stop. You will never be able to quench lust. Lust is unquenchable. That's why lust grows. Lust goes from one opponent to the next opponent to the next opponent. That's why men who are many lovers of many women, they, they, they don't want women anymore. They want something else. Then they move on from that to something else. Then they move on from that to something more wicked. Lust is never quenched. Cannot be quenched. But the thirst of love. You can get a glass a thirst of love. How deep is love? Lust never has enough. Many of you men is like Tamar. Tamar was taken by her brother and her brother hated her. That's what lust does. You lay with her and you hate her. That's because you didn't love her. Many, many women, uh, 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 I'm trying. Many women who turn and go toward the direction of the love of a woman, a woman, a woman. I know what I said. Many of them are hurt. Many of them are hurt. They're hurt because they were so broken by a man. You beat them down so much physically and with your mouth. You don't make them feel pretty. And that spirit is in the land. The temptation comes because the Canaanites are all over your virtual. It's there and you know where it is. This is not something you have to go seek out. You didn't have to go into the land of Moab to see it. You could just be right there looking and you hear the sound of it. And you just pop your head up. There it is. Well, that's how it is now in your modern time. You just go right there in a virtual reality and you know it's there. Many of you women, you're so harsh toward men. You treat them so bad. They're so broken by a man. And then they go and they look for the love of another man. And then you people, you, you mock these individuals. You come against them. Some sins that have fallen upon people is because what other people did to them in their youth. That's why the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. There needs to be a shaking. You need to shake yourself free. I don't care if you're unbelieving. You're not going to get into the glory of God. You will not be in the new Jerusalem. You will not be in the place of God's creation. God made the creation. You are not going to be able to get into his kingdom and bring your way of life. You're not going to be able to change his mind. His way works. Your way is destruction. Why would God let us bring the way that we want into his kingdom, knowing it does not fulfill creation. How can you fulfill creation and the multiplying of seed, the multiplying of nations? 
If you want to turn every nation into this and everyone stops multiplying, you will cease to exist. It is against nature. So no, God will not allow this. No, you cannot push this and sneak this into his word. I don't care how many times you translate. You will not change God's intent. Even nature will not obey you. You have to try and manipulate nature. Even if you get a man to give birth, you are going to take fallopian tubes from a woman and put it in a man. So you still are using God's make. You are trying so hard and God is looking at your folly with his mercies new every morning. And he's looking upon you with his grace and mercy in this time. Every day you have a dawn and a rise in that nighttime. Is your opportunity to say, I will do life as the way my creator intended. And when you rise up, you look for those who choose to do life as God intended. And if you are one to scourge and hurt, break individuals, you cause people to go astray as well. It is not always just the entices of the heart. Some people are broken and they can't find the Lord. I thank God that I knew he was there. I knew he was there in the still small voice. The Lord is not condemning you, but he's telling you, stop it. Get my church back to the way I intended it. You will not take the land of Canaan. You think you're going to spill over with the gospel. No, you're not. You won't get there. The devils will be there waiting. They know how to destroy a nation. They've been doing it since the ancient of days. It was the fallen angels who finally corrupted all of the seeds of mankind. Even the other children of Adam's lineages were destroyed except Noah. I don't believe. Who cares what you believe? Rather you believe or not believe, one day you will close your eyes and your body will sleep. We must turn from the uncleanliness. We must turn from the uncleanliness. Just as the Lord was leading the children of Israel to the land of promise, immediately came the Canaanite woman and that of Moab. Verse four, the Lord said unto Moses, get the heads. Find every leader whose people these are and put them before me because they allow this lewdness right when I'm getting ready to bring them into the promise. What is that promise? The Lord wanted his people to know the life and freedom of God Almighty in the earth for the first time. Verse six. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of Israel who were weeping before the door 
of the tabernacle of the congregation. Now it's interesting, the way this scripture is written, he brought this Midianitish woman in the midst, and the Bible's telling you that he brought them in the sight of the congregation. So uh, it, it's pretty peculiar how this is being spoken. Because if you bring someone, okay, they saw you, but why is the Bible telling you that he brought them, this woman, in the sight of Moses and in the sight of the congregation? Is it possible she was undressed? Is it possible he was getting ready to do something in the midst? Because what is, he's just, he brought her in the midst. Why didn't the Bible just say he brought her in the midst of the people? Why did the Bible tell you? that he brought in the sight of Moses and the sight of Israel. It's very possible she was one that was acting out. I'm not saying this. Now look at what verse seven happened. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them. So they were in the tent now. What do you think they were doing? And the man of Israel and the woman threw their belly so that the plague was stayed. Plague, you hear that? And those that died of the plague were 20 and 4,000. So that means it's very possible that 24,000 people got up and went and started committing whoredom. Can you imagine an entire football stadium of people engaging in adultery and fornication? If you thought your little group of eight, whatever you people do, and I know you're gonna multiply, the Lord hates it, he doesn't like it, it's unclean. But there's a euphoria that you go after. It is the rise of lust. Lust cannot be quenched, cannot quench lust, ever. Why do you think you have greed? When a man becomes a millionaire, he's gonna want 10 million. After he gets 10 million, he's gonna want 20. After he gets 20, he's gonna want 50. After he gets 50, he's gonna want 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, a billion. After he gets a billion, he's gonna want two billion. After he gets two, he's gonna want 10. After you get 10, he's gonna want 20. Lust is never quenched. You can lust for money, you can lust for women, you can lust for men, you can lust for other things. You can lust for houses, you can lust for cars. This is why this is such a stupidity in the house of God that you think the gospel came to give you these things. And most of you can't afford it. You don't even raise your children with an inheritance. You have no inheritance for your children. Children have no education, nothing. You didn't give them anything. You went after things you lusted with your eyes. And this is why the children of Israel are faltering at God's commandment to go take Canaan. They can't. Why? Now they're lusting. Christ told us, go into all the lands and preach the gospel. You can't. Why? Lusting. Some of you men go over there and you do works for the Lord and you commit adultery and fornication with the people. And the people keep your name silent. They don't tell what you're doing. And you keep it silent. And you want to have power. You want to have power like Peter and Paul and the 12 disciples. You want to have that power. Well, they didn't walk like that. And they were in the new covenant. You think once saved, always saved. I don't know where you got that from. No, it's your time. That's the way you believe. It's the new gospel. It's the gospel of the inspirational speakers. There is no inspirational preacher. There is no such thing. That's oxymoron. A preacher is going to tell you, get it right. Or you're going to have fire engulfing you. That's what preachers do. You are inspirational talkers. You cannot herald the coming of the Lord's judgment as an inspirational talker. And that has filled the house of God. And as an inspirational talker, you can't stop Israel from laying 
with this woman. You can't stop the church from laying with the virtual and reality. You're not going to stop the church from doing this. You're not going to stop. Some of you think you're going to be washed in the blood till he comes. You are deceived. He will not come. You're going to be hungry. You're going to be down to your last draws. You're going to be gritting your teeth. You're going to be in judgment. If you don't stop this. It's going to fall on every nation. You will not be able to even drink a glass. Is that what you want? I already know that Israel did not fulfill because of the same cause. And if I have to get you to come to me by reason of the same judgments, I will get my son's bride at all costs. And if you gotta be in sackcloth and ashes and broken teeth, missing hair, missing nails, I'm gonna get my son a bride. Because when you call upon the name of the Lord, I will wash you and make that body new. But I will bring you to wretchedness. You will not be attractive at all. But I'm going to get my son a wife. He's waited long enough. We will continue this book on another day. Purify yourselves because your enemy, the Northern Kings, they have seen your way and you are affecting their children. Their hearts cannot be tempered. Listen now to the preacher. Listen to the one whom you hate. Because not any word will drop to the ground in this generation. Here the words of the Lord as you are learning of the Holy Bible. Take every jot and every tittle and reconsider your ways because the angels of the Lord has witnessed things by this generation that they have never seen since I made all things. Book of Revelation. Be blessed. We thank you for watching another lesson as we continue to go through the Bible from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation. Now, for those of you who would like to contribute to our five-year vision of expanding our broadcasting, opening up tabernacles, opening a child development center, a trade school, and a rehabilitation center, you can give through any of these five ways. Whether you give through Cash App, Zelle, PayPal, or online under the Give tab, or finally, by mailing it in. Now, once again, any contribution you give would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. We thank you for once again watching an episode as we go through the Bible chapter by chapter, book by book, as we see the details of our Lord, our, our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, and his mission to bring us into eternal life. And in this chapter, we were able to see uh, Numbers 25, we were able to 
see how just when Israel was headed to go up, they were in the land of the Moabites and they started to mix with other lands. And we see how they committed ungodly deeds before other gods. Yes. And, you know, one of the things that I continue to keep noticing... You can bring it closer. Bring it closer. Yeah. One of the things that I keep... That, I, that I'm noticing, the patterns, um, the cause of, of the detour of God's will, it's stemming from women. Um, I know there's this big, you know, thing about you know, males, um, and so forth, you know, you know, they might, you know, cause things to occur. But in this chapter, you clearly see that what began to happen is men, of course, you know, were taken off track or so forth by the, you know, the women that caused them to actually bow down to a false God yes, and begin man. to sacrifice onto these gods because they merged with a certain type of woman. Um, at that time, it was the Moabites um, that they were doing certain things that were ungodly before the Lord. And men, of course, their appeal to women caused them to also begin to forsake their God and serve and bow down to a false God. True. You know, True. I, as, as a female, I'm like, oh, you know, it's starting to hit home, which, you know, um, clearly shows in the Bible uh, as you go further that the woman was deceived yes, you know the power that we have as women when we're not in the alignment with the Lord can cause men to be also detoured it's not necessarily the man um, in most instances that I keep seeing in the Bible where I see things have occurred you know, at the hand of women. And that's a, that's a little scary for me as a woman yes, to see, you know, what I'm seeing in the Bible. And then what I'm seeing also, um, in this time of generation, you know, I, I, I'm sorry that, you know, we didn't get to go further into the Bible where we saw the zealousness of a person because he felt zealous for the Lord that he had to do something. And I, I mean, Maybe I'm getting off no, the track, exactly. but you know what I'm seeing in my time right now of the cry of many women um, causing something to shed innocent blood. You know that's 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 a little scary that's because scary. as you continue to see the chapter, you start seeing the wrath of God based on of conduct. You know, um, and it's coming from a certain type of woman. Yes, man. That's true. Because a plague came upon Israel after uh, such deeds were done. Mm -hmm. And the leaders were punished for it, also for allowing it to happen. And the only reason why it stayed is because the, uh, Eleazar's son, son of Aaron, went and was zealous for the Lord, as the Bible says. Right. And he, he changed the heart of God. I mean, he committed a, a conduct that, you know, um, as I was stating earlier, that we tend to kind of censor God's word where we won't read certain or we won't teach certain scriptures or we won't, um, you know, highlight certain chapters yes, because man or people may think uh, we shouldn't talk about that. So we kind of censor a certain type of um story or a certain type of scripture and we only give those that probably uh people can accept but we can't do that because the bible is written by the inspiration of the holy ghost and it's to admonish us this actually helps us to that we don't do the same errors or the same uh the same sins so that there won't be a repercussion for doing certain things yes ma'am you know so that we don't get to uh defiled uh where the lord has to intervene and purge us through situations where you know, could come famine or it can come destruction or things in order for us to change. So we, you know, I see a lot of censoring of God's word, but there's so many things that we are exposed to that we don't censor that actually it hurts us. It, 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 it makes us worse as a people. Yes, ma'am. So when I read this, um, you know, reading my beginning to the end, 
You see, many things that people just won't touch, which you have to. Yes, ma'am. You can't bypass it. Yes, ma'am. It's all part of the book of the Bible, right? Correct. So we, it must be taught. It must be, it's the word of God. And it's in there for a representation of God's uh, righteousness, his desires of how he desired life. He created it, so it's not his desire. It's what he made. Right. So... In the Bible, there are events that show how God feels about certain things. And here you saw how the Lord does does not like it goes against his creation. It's like everything else. And when you go against creation, usually creation makes a problem when you, you know, go against creation. You end up having diseases or things happen in the earth. So God is not the only one who... um, how should I say this? Brings judgment. He brings judgment, but also the action itself is against creation. Mm-hmm. So because it's wrong, it's going to create something that's not good, if you will. Right. And, and it's, it'll cause a reaction within our bodies. There are certain things that should not be in our body because yes, of defilement and, you know, whatever occurs. Um, there's scientific people say scientifically things occur diseases so forth god calls it sin and the bible says that the wages of sin is death and when we touch sin and we do sins it gets in our blood it defiles us um things can happen but not only that um you know god has an enemy and if you you take his sin you do his sin he's going to come back and cause you to pay for the sin in whichever way he can Yes, ma'am. So, yes, ma'am. Yeah. But that was Numbers <laughs> chapter 22. Or 25. 25. I'm sorry. I, so there's a lot of 20s. <laughs> but Numbers chapter 25. And as we move on, we will start to see how the children of Israel move on from lands to lands. And again, the Lord, it has now came to the... I'm kind of getting ahead, but in the next chapter, we will see how the Lord counts the people once again. Okay. And we will see the people remaining... From the generation that the Lord said, you will not make it to the promised land, your children. So we will pick up at that point in Numbers 26. To want to cross over with the young. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But we thank you for watching these lessons as we study the Holy Word to really understand the heart of our God, the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And our goal is to get to the last chapter of Revelation. And that is going to be a very interesting series. <laughs> But we hope you are intrigued, you find an understanding of God, and you wish to follow his ways because he created this world and he he wants everyone to live in peace, but he created it, so he has laws. But if you wish to follow us, you can follow us on any of our platforms, And but if you want to be saved and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, accept God as the king of all pray this prayer with me say Lord God I come before you humbly and I ask that you wash me of my sins I repent of my sins and I accept you as my Lord and King my creator and I accept you as the creator of all and I accept your son as the king and as my savior I ask that you accept me into your kingdom in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Welcome to the kingdom of heaven, where everlasting life is a gift. A gift that we will eternally be grateful for. Because we'll be in eternity forever giving thanks for eternity. So, um, that day will be an amazing day. It is hard to fathom now because we have so many days on this earth to begin with as our minds you know kind of grasp but living in eternity is uh, very hard to understand (laughs) but it will happen and i i hope that you will join the kingdom of heaven and sit at that table and serve the one true king who is the author of peace once again we love you you bring my cup. I'm going to have to probably go back to the other mic, right? <laughs> Same again.
Yeah, say again, Mama. Say what? Say what? We said we love you. Oh, we love you. <laughs> we love you.